Happy Valentine's Day. Wow. This year's, well, you're listening to the Dr. Casey Show, and the year's just whizzing past. I mean, thank goodness for some of us who wish this economy was a thing of our past, but oh my goodness. It is February 14th, 2009. And how are you going to be spending your Valentine's Day? I've heard some pretty creative answers uh, around the station. Last night, I had the pleasure of going on for a moment on the bigs with jeff biggs here at am 830 week <laughs> weekdays from 7 to 10 in the evening i i've got a little game of peekaboo going on here at the station but uh if my husband's listening don't worry honey these beautiful brown eyes looking at me are only four years old um but i was speaking with jeff last night and i asked him how he was going to be spending his valentine's day and he said that he's going to take his wife and his three daughters out to dinner their ages are six, four, and seven months. So good luck, Jeff, uh, making it to dessert. That's all I have to say. And also Sue at the station here, she makes everything run. Um, she told me that she is going to be having dinner at home with her family, and they're going to donate the money that they would have spent at a restaurant to a food bank. And I thought that was a really fabulous idea. Me? Well, um, I have a gift card and grandparents for babysitters. So my husband and I are headed to Roy's for a traditional Valentine's Day night. Um, you know, could not resist an evening out. And I even broke down and got him a cheesy musical card. So there you have it. That's how I'm spending Valentine's Day. But we have a very special guest coming up later in the show for Valentine's Day. You know, when I realized that I was going to be on today, and we are on live, um, I, I thought, you know, who could, what type of story could I be featuring on Valentine's Day that wasn't a downer? Because let's face it, between Octomom taking up the headlines and between A-Rod and Phelps and the Justice Brigade that are following the two of them, um, parents and coaches are pretty much losing it at every turn. Um, I thought, you know what, let's do something positive. It is Valentine's Day and, and we deserve to smile and feel good. So I thought, you know, maybe we could chat with an Angels legend. How about a chat with Tim Salmon? And what if on Valentine's Day we could chat with both he and his wife, Marcy? Wouldn't that be uplifting? I mean, talk about a conversation, a story about commitment to both their family, commitment to community. Mr. Angels himself, Tim Salmon, is actually coming up very shortly on the show. I'm so excited to hear their love story. And they really are a lovely couple. There's just no getting around that. They're they're lovely in what they do. They're lovely in who they are. And it'll be a great conversation, I'm sure. But first off, I've got a really fun mental training exercise for everyone because my office has been filled with a lot of stress lately. I'll be honest. There's been a lot of stress for people uh, preparing for combine training, a lot of stress with families dealing with job loss or the threat of job loss, a lot of stress uh, for athletes working on getting their contracts secured. So generally speaking, a lot of stress going around. And I know that life can be an exercise in stress management, but there's got to be, you know, some fun things that we can be doing. So a simple way that I want to encourage you to give yourself some relief is with laughter. And I know it might sound a little too simple, but, you know, sometimes it's about daily doses of laughter because a daily smile um, can go a long way when you add them all up at the end of the month. So my daily smile comes courtesy of something you might not expect. I mean, of course, it comes from my daughter. But uh, when I'm at the office, my daily smile comes from Sports Illustrated's They Set It calendar. You know, those um, yearly calendars where you rip off a sheet that um, for every day it's got a quote. Um, I'm showing my YouTube vid uh, viewers what this looks like. Okay, so the They Set It calendar. So what I've been doing is I saved up a few of my faves to share with you today. And I've been, some of these are from uh, January and February. But okay, so here's my first, all right? This is again from the Sports Illustrated They Set It calendar. And according to SI, on May 25th, 1981, uh, Pete Rose uh, was quoted after a plane circled um, the stadium and had a sign trailing it with a message that was meant for him and it was signed Love Christie and when Pete Rose was asked about it he said and I quote I'm hard to reach on the phone now I know that couples in pro sports have a lot of uh, difficulties with time management and getting a hold of one another and we'll have to ask Marcy about that later but you know now at least they have texting I, I guess back in 1981 um in the air was about as good as it got. So there's some some things that remain the same. Schedules are busy for a professional ball player, but I guess technology has made uh, staying in touch with your loved ones a little easier. All right, another one that made me smile. And again, this is Sports Illustrated. They said it, uh, dated September 30th, 1990, this quote. 
I love this one because it is it's about being grounded, all right? And it just made me laugh out loud. So Lynn Gottschalk, um, she was a volunteer driver uh, at the ATP Championships in Cincinnati. And evidently, Andre Agassi um, showed up at a Kentucky airport one late evening, and he didn't want to leave the gate until security had arrived, and uh, they were late. And evidently, she said to him, again, according to SI, that Andre, it's 11 p.m., and you're in Kentucky. Unless you've been on Hee Haw recently, no one's going to mob you. I love that one. It gives you a little bit of perspective. But can you imagine trying to date someone or develop a relationship with someone who has to be that vigilant about their surroundings because of their celebrity status, whether they be an athlete or another type of celebrity? I mean, let's be honest. They're, they're a little out of touch when they go that far with it. But at the same time, if they let down their guard, they get taken advantage of at the drop of a hat. So, you know, probably in all fairness to Andre, he probably didn't know what time zone he was in, let alone what state he was in um, when that happened. But again, just made me smile. The relationships and the lives of professional athletes, it's got to be difficult. Now, this one's just a favorite one because it has to do with Valentine's Day. And, and it actually is the SI They Said It page for Valentine's Day. Uh, this is just this is a great one. All right. Evidently, on May 24th, 1971, going back a little ways, Digger Phelps, who was the new Notre Dame basketball coach, um, was explaining how he got his nickname. And he said... My father is an undertaker, and I worked for him part-time. There were advantages to the job. For instance, while I was dating my wife, I sent her flowers every day. Getting creative. <laughs> That's a positive ray frame if I ever heard one. So if you haven't taken care of your Valentine Day you know, today, you've got no excuse. Go out and get some flowers, all right? <laughs> Go out and uh, get creative. All right, so happy Valentine's Day to you. And a little laughter does go a long way when you add it up every day. Now, joining me after the break, the Kingfish, the home run all-time leader for the Angels, Tim Salmon and his wife, Marcy.